You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jenna's Path. So we're continuing on with our Chapter 4. Ah, yes, two of a kind. Yep, you all know what happened. Wolves got together. Sweet wolf, sweet wolf couple. Now let's see where that goes to, shall we? Thank goodness she's wearing that. So I don't have to censor it. All right, <clears throat> let's do it, guys. <clears throat> yeah, one more my voice. <laughs> That's when I see my claws. Uh, I'd say awesome. I'm a wolf man. And I am awestruck. My heartbeat quickens. Marvelous power energizes me. The world looks and feels more vibrant than ever. I feel alive. Jesse's features soften, the concern fading away. It's really something, isn't it? I flex my digits and marvel at the sensation of my claws pressing into my paw pads. How did... I don't know. I didn't know. I don't know how this could... Uh, I've bungled everything. Malcolm, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Dim memories of the scrum resurface. I wonder if I should be angry. The truth is, I don't have it in me. And seeing Jessie on the verge of tears, all I want is to reassure her. There's nothing to forgive. Never stop being the firecracker I fell in love with, even when you explode. I bite my lip, wondering if I chose the right word. Explosion. It's built from your passion, your drive to protect your loved ones. It's a beautiful spectacle that shines with your colors. You can illuminate the world with your spirit. Jesse laughs forlornly. Never has anyone more eloquently described a wild beast let loose in a pub. When you put it that way, I suppose it does sound a lot worse, doesn't it? I join in with her laughter. A part of me knows I ought to be concerned. I haven't yet processed the result of Jesse's audition. But her outburst, not to mention my transformation, could mean for our lives, our futures. Everything has changed. But I don't want to think about it. This form, it fills me with hope, vigor, purpose. Truthfully, I've never felt so excited. I'm not sure I want to go back. I didn't mean to say it aloud, but there it is. Never have I spoken to her words, except when I told Jessie that I love her. This catches her attention. Oh, Malcolm, you don't mean that. You could go back to normal. I'm sure of it. It's too late for that, don't you think? Even were we to shed our fur coats, there's no putting the cat or rather the dog back in the bag. I smirk, trying hard to keep the mood light. We're both keenly aware of the turmoil she caused and what we just escaped. It's not safe to go back, is it? Her eyes reflect the moonlight. Her pupils grow. Tears begin forming again. I sigh, conceding the seer to the seriousness of the situation. I don't think so. Not like this. As she closes her eyes tightly and whispers. I lost control. And now I have no home. As I watch her bottom lip tremble, it begins to sink in that she might be right. You still have your sisters. You have me. If we go back without our fur coats, tell them everything we know. The townsfolk must realize we're not. Monsters? Her look tells me I should be no better. Perhaps I am grasping at straws. There's one more possibility, though, for Grand's sake. I hesitate to suggest it. Or, we leave. You wanted to escape. We finally have a clear-cut reason to go. We leave Atna Craig and start anew. I can't. Her objection catches me off balance. Pardon? I thought... I can't go back to where people are, Malcolm. I blew up here, in my own hometown. My safe space. Imagine if that had happened in the city, in a nightclub. There'd be a riot. Police! And look at yourself. I did this to you. If the man I love isn't safe from me, then who is? She lowers her head, and I worry she's ashamed. Jesse, I understand how you must feel, but for me, this is a gift. I know it's supposed to be a calm moment, but Jesus Christ, look at them hips. Oh my God. For a moment, I let myself revel in the wild energy flowing through me once more. The wound, the wound of excitement, just begging to be released. Instinct tells me it won't do either of us any good to linger on our predicament, as I wiggled my toes and paused playfully. 
I want a rematch. Eh? You said I could have a rematch any time. Come on, race you to the top of the ridge. He looks at me like I'm out of my mind. After all that's happened, Malcolm, we can't be found like this. We both need to get back to our human forms and figure out what next. I'm surprised to hear Jesse being so cautious. Now it's my turn to throw caution to the wind. Sounds to me like you're worried I might win, now that we're on an even playing field. I see his eyes narrow, and I know my challenge has been accepted. I'm worried that you'll break a leg. Have you seen how rocky the ground is? Have you even run on two paws yet? Good, and you won't mind giving me a head start. I take off with a lunge, and probably lose my balance, falling face first into the dirt. Now <laughs> oh, come you idiot. Jesse graciously pulls me back up onto my feet. <sighs> hmm, sorry, guys. Not so simple, is it, Cham? Here, I'll show you how it's done. Jesse yes, shoots up the hillside, kicking up pebbles as she weaves between boulders and bushes. The powder of her haunches nearly shakes the ground under my feet. Oi! No fair! <laughs> what an expression on her face! I start again, focusing hard on my balance. My legs keep me upright, but my feet are start but my feet was but my feet still startle me with how huge and unwieldy they are. It's as if I bounce as I go, like standing on springs. My confidence grows with each stride. I can actually feel each follicle in my body as the wind rushes past. The sensation motivates me, pushing me even faster, higher with each bound, collecting speed while losing my breath. Instead of weaving between the rocks, I start to hop from one to the next, closing the distance between me and Jesse. This is nothing like a run around the schoolyard, or a game of tag behind our homes. It's a level flying, a race among the clouds. A chase with a deeper a chase with deeper inhales, louder exhales, and a heartbeat that prong that prong that pounds from excitement instead of exhaustion. I glance up and see Jessie looking back. She winks and seems surprised. Not bad, you're faster than I thought you'd be. When she turns back to face me, to face the hilltop, she kicks off a rock and stumbles. At first I think she's teasing me, letting me outpace her. But no, it was a misstep. She mutters a curse and scrambles to get her stride back. I pass her, tongue wagging and smile as she falls behind. The top of the ridge is in sight. My heart leaps. For the first time in my life, I might actually beat Jesse in a race. Oh no. She... You bitch, you threw a twig at me! A shadow passes overhead. It's a stick flying through the air in front of my face. I said her... Oh! How dare you, Jesse! I said an urge strikes. I launch myself into the sky with all the four paws. Teeth bared, my maw gapes. Cheeky and target. Sorry for the yawning eyes I just got out. That is a silly face. When I come back down with the stick in my jaws, I'm dumbstruck with the joy of success. I got it! <laughs> Wait, what's so important about this stick? I sit with my prize hanging out of my jaw while Jessie runs past with a smug grin on her face. Do, th do the same thing to her! Throw a stick! I reach the top just seconds behind her, and we're both panting and giggling like school children. Yeah, it's pretty clear who won that one, though. You cheated. I just evened the odds. She laughs, putting my head. You still have a lot to learn, but good job, Malcolm. I have to agree. I went from human to racing dog in one night. I feel like a new foal, clumsy on my feet the first minute, embracing my wobbly legs the next. There's a lot to be said about the innate intelligence of the animal kingdom. Of course, I was distracted by a stick, so there's a lot to be said in other ways, too, I suppose. But it was such a rush, such a blissfully ignorant event to take my mind away from other things. I can understand Jessie's kinship to her wolf spirit and body. It felt amazing, rejuvenating. I know, that perfectly sums it up. You said there's lots more to learn. Tell me more about what to expect. Please don't think that way. You can't stay like this forever. But I'll be like this tonight. Something is swishing behind me, and it takes me a moment to realize it's my own wagging tail. Jesse laughs. I must look like an eager pet awaiting instruction. Then first of all, you need to slow down with all the tail wagging. Your fur is flying everywhere. She swats the air between us, and sure enough, catches a tuft of hair floating there. Alright, I'll try to calm down. It's always a struggle when I'm around you. Yeah. 
Look at that. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one before. I love it. Missy sticks her tongue out at me. You'll learn that shedding is good for keeping a clean coat, though. As you groom yourself, you'll feel less itchy. Plus, the hair helps the birds build their nests. At least that's what I tell myself. Can't say the same for Marion. At home, she has a broom out in the blink of an eye. I always, I always, I always blame the shedding on toast. Jesse winks conspiratorially, and it makes me wonder how Gran would react to her every, to her hat, to hat everywhere. Gran wouldn't make me sleep outside, would she? Oh, and your appetite! You're going to become voracious! Very soon, in fact. I don't know how we'll get you fed, fed enough. I'll survive. I've done without before. You'll just need to keep your energy up, so we need, so we need to keep moving or racing. She winks again, and my heart jumps. This evening is quickly becoming my favorite to date. To share this is... Jesse, I can't believe I get to share this with you. My voice cracks a bit from excitement. Oh! She throws her arms around me. Oh, Malcolm, I want to be scared. I want this to feel wrong. But it doesn't. It makes me so happy. She reaches for my neck, giving me scratches at the base of my head. It feels nice. Her claws gently make their way up to my scalp, and I smile, nuzzling deeper into her neck. I inhale her musk, noticing the closeness in the way she makes me feel so close, so uninhibited. As she keeps holding me and rolling her nails up and across my head, I look at her, her eyes closed, her lips curled into a smile. Oh, Thumbnail. With vivid detail, I can remember our first slow dance. Here we are again, this time surrounded by the glow of fireflies instead of the pub lights. It's like an outdoor dance hall, where we're the last two stragglers, the lovers who won't leave. We try to drink every last drop of the intimacy, the quiet, the movement of each other. I let her scent fill my mind, trying to keep this memory whole, lest I ever forget the most surreal seconds of my own life. I am here, now, alive and wild, having broken free from the captivity of my human skin, the skin keeping me hostage in a world that tried to kill me. That still tries to kill me. Perhaps I'm not meant to be of that world after all. Not anymore. I'm here. Now. Reborn. We rock and sway. We rock and sway. Just as we've done before. But this time, like every new adventure, we share is different. I run my own paw along her shoulder. Giving her the same light scratches she offered me. We dance in rhythm with nothing but sound of crickets. And the constant and fluid beat of our own hearts. We are at ease. Even as we move, we are still, still within ourselves and each other's souls. Malcolm, I love you so much. It's like a speaker fell, guys. I love you too. Our voices are soft. Neither of us wish to disturb this fleeting moment of peace. Snatched from tonight's mayhem. A moment of peace that we know cannot last. There will be other evenings, other full moons. We should return to human, Malcolm. I sense reluctance in her words. But... Jessie smiles wistfully, her voice dropping to a mere whisper. The, he the heat of her breath on my shoulder makes my hair stand on end. But... Not that I love feeling your fur against mine. It makes me feel less... Alone? Yes. Her arm holds me tighter, running up the length of my back. Blood rushes to my head and elsewhere. This night, the moon above, it's all too much, too consuming. I want her to never let go. I want more. Jesse, there's one more thing I'd like to share with you tonight. Something you want me to teach you? One second, guys. Hey, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I uh, just uh, had to talk to someone real quick. <clears throat> anyway, all uh. right. I can almost feel her lip curl into a seductive snarl on my neck. She grazes one fang across my earlobe, and I nearly lose myself. Yeah, I try that timer. I nearly lose control. I don't need to say anymore. She can sense it. And then they banged. And it was, yep, and then they... Pl oh, yes. Oh, yes, what does this mean? My pathway is sealed? Yes. Oh, is this the symbol for, for banging now? Yes, it is. It was good. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Atop the ridge, I bask in the moonshine, licking my limbs in absent-minded bliss. Probably best not to think about how unsanitary that is. 
Dizzy is less at ease. Looks off in the direction of the town, watching worriedly as twinkling lights scatter into the countryside. Torchbearers. Are they finally going home? Or are they looking for us? Hey, Jesse. You know, after everything, in spite of everything, I ended up having a wonderful night. She sighs and smiles. This one for the history books. I don't know if I'm disappointed or relieved that the night's almost over. She's right. The faintest hint of light peeks over the horizon. I've had, a, I've had some long days, but this takes the biscuit, box and all. As he turns to me sympathetically. I'm sorry, Malcolm, but it's time. I nod, taking my tail in my paws, stroking it, hoping it's not the last time I'll see it. Thanks for the wild ride. I stand and take her paws into mine, a little nervous. So, how does it work? There's nothing to it. Try to center yourself, Malcolm, and focus on our grasp. With, with a little effort, I steady my nerve. I know I'm in good hands. The magic that governs us may still be a mystery, but I understand the power of our bond. I, I can feel it. Perhaps it's my heightened senses, or I've become tuned to magic. Whatever the case, the energy swirling around us is not only easier to detect, it feels more alive than ever between us. That's the ticket. I'll find the real you deep inside. Tap into it, Malcolm. Set it free. The real me, I search myself, trying to find an instinct, a memory, anything to grab hold. Oh. Uh, look at my love for Jesse. Yep, okay, yep, okay, let's pause it right here. What will this choice give us? Standing here, holding my companion's paw, I can only think of one thing. Her. But since I came home, Jesse has filled every moment with freedom, with freedom and excitement. More than anything else, I want to be able to live happily with her. Through this unfathomable magic, I make my wish known. Yay! Ooh. Oh! I knew it. When Jesse and I are a team, nothing is impossible. The force reverberates through me, and I'm relieved to feel the fur receding where Jesse's, where Jesse's and my hands met. Meet. But the ethereal winds that surrounded us are turning into a tempest. The reverberations grow into the same powerful tremors that shook Alana's house. Is it because of me? Am I part of the solution or part of the problem? Uh oh. Uh oh. Our control is slipping. Our forms are snapping back like an elastic band. I feel conflicted. I don't know what to do. Uh oh. Jesse pulls her pulse from mine, and the tempest subsides, still present but at the edge of perception. I'm sorry, I must need more practice. No, it's not, I just, I don't understand, I can't will myself back. What do you mean? Whatever I used to grasp hold of to return to human, that piece of me within, I can't find it anymore. Uh oh. It's gone. Her words carry a terrible finality to them. Don't say that. Remember, you're still you. I don't know what I am anymore. I think something changed when I... when I saw Father. So it really was him. The McLeod Patriarch. My childhood memories of Owen are of, of a grizzled elder. Stern. Cold. Every bit the opposite of my grandfather. With that ragged man at the pub, his face twisted by fury, he looks more ghoul than man. Aye, alive and... not well, so it would seem. She looks back up at me, defeated. I'm sorry, Malcolm. It's no use. And if I can't transform myself, I can't help you. Well, that's a relief. What? I wasn't ready to give this form up just yet anyway. It's too much fun. The strong front I'm putting up for Jesse doesn't seem to be working. The truth is, it's sinking in for both of us that there may actually be no going back. Your dress. You need it. I thought of that. I don't think it would do any good. Even if it did, I can't very well march me back into the pub to get it, can I? I... I guess not. She stares off, lost in painful memories. Did... Did I hurt anyone? For her sake, I choose to omit the scratch on my arm that seems to have pres precipitated all of this. No, just your father's pride in the Bulgare's wallet when he has to replace all the broken furniture. As he smiles wanely at my attempted joke, I work harder to buoy our spirits. We'll figure something out, I'm sure of it. Until then, we'll be wolves together. 
I'll finally be able to understand what it's like, and you'll finally have someone like you. A pack of two. Exactly. Sounds like the cat's meow, meowcom. What the fuck did I say meowcom for? Or the, or the wolf's howl, haha. <laughs> Jesse laughs and joins in. <laughs> we both lift our heads to the sky and sing our praises to the night, a little pack of two. It feels natural, doesn't it? Aye, it feels good. Jesse laughs. Oh, okay, God, that was so good. Good episode. Oh, these two are finally together as wolves, as nature intended. Oh, God, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I certainly had fun recording it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next episode. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!